Hello, I am Brinda from iLeap Academy and today from Mr. Men series written by Roger Hargreaves, I am going to introduce you to Mr. Noisy. As the name suggests, Mr. Noisy was an unnecessarily loud character so much that people around him were really fed up and they all together devised a plan to teach him a lesson. Come. Let's see the funny bit. Mr. Noisy by Roger Hargreaves Mr. Noisy was a very, very noisy person indeed. For example, if Mr. Noisy was reading the story to you, he'd be shouting at the top of his voice. And the top of Mr. Noisy's voice is a very loud place indeed. You can hear it a hundred miles away. For example, when most people sneeze, you can hear them in the next room. But, ah, when Mr. Noisy sneezes, you can hear him in the next country. Now this story starts with Mr. Noisy was asleep in bed in his bedroom in his house which was at the top of the hill. He was snoring and as you all can very well imagine when Mr. Noisy snores this is a snore worth hearing. It sounds more like a herd of elephants than a snore. Then Mr. Noisy's alarm clock went off. Mr. Noisy's alarm clock sounds like no other alarm clock in the world. It sounds more like a fire engine. <coughs> Mr. Noisy woke up and so did all the people who lived in Wobble Town, which is at the bottom of Mr. Noisy's hill. Later that day, Mr. Noisy decided that he had to go to shop. When he went out of his house, shutting the door behind him, bang, the door wobbled. The house wobbled. The whole hill wobbled. Wobble Town wobbled. Even a bird flying high above wobbled. Then Mr. Noisy walked down the hill. Cluck, cluck, cluck. He walked into the baker's shop. Crash went the door as he opened it. Bang went the door as he shut it. I like a, <laughs> I like a loaf of bread, boomed Mr. Noisy to Mrs. Crumb, the baker's wife. Mrs. Crumb trembled and sold him a loaf. Then Mr. Noisy walked along the street to the butcher. Clump, clump, clump. He walked into the butcher's shop. Crash went the door as he opened it. And I'd like a piece of meat. Boomed Mr. Noisy into Mr. Bacon, the butcher. Mr. Bacon trembled and sold him some meat. Afterwards, Mrs. Crumb met Mr. Bacon in the street. Oh, we really must do something about Mr. Noisy being so noisy, she said. Absolutely, replied Mr. Bacon. But what? I know, said Mrs. Crum, and she whispered something into Mr. Bacon's ear. Mr. Bacon smiled a small smile, which grew into a broad grin. Mrs. Crum, he said, I think you have the answer. The following day, Mr. Noisy went again shopping down the Wobble Town. Clump, clump, clump. He went into Mrs. Crumb's shop. I like a loaf of bread. He boomed. Sorry, what did you say? Asked Mrs. Crumb, pretending not to hear. I like a loaf of bread. Mr. Noisy shouted. 
Sorry, said Mrs. Crumb, putting her hand to her ear. Can you please speak up? I'd like a loaf of bread, roared Mr. Noisy. I can't hear you, replied Mrs. Crumb. Mr. Noisy gave up and went out. Mr. Noisy went into Mr. Bacon's shop. I'd like a piece of meat, he boomed. Mr. Bacon pretended not to notice. I'd like a piece of meat, Mr. Noisy shouted. Do you say something? asked Mr. Bacon. I said I'd like a piece of meat, roared Mr. Noisy. Pardon? said Mr. Bacon. Mr. Noisy gave up and went out and went home and went to bed hungry. And after that day, Mr. Noisy tried again. He went to Mrs. Crumb's shop. I'd like a loaf of bread, he boomed. A what? asked Mrs. Crumb. Mr. Noisy shouted at the very top of his voice. A loaf of... And then he stopped and then he thought. And then he said quietly, I'd like a loaf of bread, please, Mrs. Crumb. Mrs. Crumb smiled. Certainly, she said. Then Mr. Noisy went to Mr. Bacon's shop. I'd like a piece of meat, he boomed. Did you say something? asked Mr. Bacon. Yes, I did, shouted Mr. Noisy at the very top of his voice. I said I'd like a... And then he stopped, and then he thought, and then he said quietly, I'd like a piece of meat, Mr. Bacon. Mr. Bacon smiled. My pleasure, he said. So carrying his bread and meat, Mr. Noisy set off home up the hill. Clump, clump, clump. Then he stopped, then he thought. And then, do you know what he did? He tiptoed. A tiptoe was something Mr. Noisy had never tried before. It was fun. Mr. Noisy arrived at his front door. He put out his hand to open the door and then he stopped and then he thought and then do you know what he did? He opened the door very quietly. He stepped inside and then he shut the door very gently. Quietly and gently were two things Mr. Noisy had never tried either before. That was fun too. And do you know something? From then until now, Mr. Noisy isn't anything like as noisy as he used to be. And do you know something else? The people of Robletown were delighted, especially Mrs. Crumb and Mr. Bacon. And do you know something else? Mr. Noisy has learned how to whisper. Did you like the story? My God, after reading that story, I am sounding like Mr. Noisy. Ah, oh, it was funny story, isn't it? Hmm, time to remember. What was the name of the town where Mr. Noisy lived? What happened each morning when Mr. Noisy's alarm clock rang? What was peculiar about Mr. Noisy's shoes? Who were the two people who finally devised a plan and taught Mr. Noisy to be shh? Think about it. Till then, goodbye.